Hey guys, this is Anon, and then today we're going to take an in-depth look at the AT-2, which is the Tier 5 British Tank Destroyer. And this thing is an absolute monster if it's played in good hands. Uh, I've been meaning to do a review on this for a while, uh, because I finally finished my 100 battles in it. It's not exactly the most enjoyable tank to play because it's very slow and lumbering around the battlefield. It's very similar playstyle, kind of a T-95, where if you can get a good matchup and roll forward, it's really incredibly difficult to kill uh, because the armor is simply amazing. Uh, but a lot of people struggle with it because you don't necessarily understand. It's a lot about watching matchups and just choosing your engagements the right way. So we are going to look at it pretty in depth here and uh, kind of give you a good idea of how to succeed with this tank. Okay, so jumping right over to compare tanks, I pulled most of the tier 5 tank destroyers, and that's partially because the AT-2 doesn't compare directly to pretty much any of the other tanks. Uh, most tank destroyers at lower tiers do not have much armor, they're focusing on having a fantastic gun or mobility, and the AT-2 is slow, uh, has a lot of armor, and then the gun uh, kind of basically is a compromise with it a little bit. So definitely different. Um, in that respect and so we'll treat it that way so i went ahead and brought in like i said the stug wolverine t49 su85 and super long german name that we're just going to call the toaster for ease i loaded up the setup that i use which is vents rammer and binoculars and then i kind of took that into consideration with the rest of them as well a lot of these are snipers uh like the stug i will left the rammer off because a lot of people will use a camo net which isn't shown on compare tanks because we don't see camo values the wolverine uh, with its turret is similar uh, we could put binox or optics there it just kind of depends on how you play it um, and actually uh, that can't have vents so we could just throw a gld in there just because or you could run the camo net again it just kind of depends on how you want to handle that tank uh, t49 is a full sniper so that would almost always have a camo net uh, su85 doesn't have the gun handling so we would uh, go with both of those together but still binox and toaster is also a pure sniper so that would have uh, binox all right, so looking at the guns here right off the bat, like I said, we're going to sacrifice a little bit with this tank with the gun because of the absolutely amazing armor that we'll obviously get into more as we go. So this has a six pounder on the British line, a little bit unique. It's a much smaller gun than most of them are gonna have. Most of these tanks run a 75 millimeter, 76 millimeter. Uh, some of the bigger ones like an 85 or get all the way up to the, the fantastic 88 flat gun on the toaster. So because of the smaller shell, we're going to see much much lower penetration values for the standard ap it is only 110 which is not fantastic you can see it's by far the lowest uh, for any of the tier 5 tank destroyers uh, apcr is a little bit more respectable it goes all the way up to 180 which uh, is actually kind of middle of the pack, not too bad. Uh, the toaster reigns supreme here with that large and fantastic 88 millimeter gun, um, but it's better than the American tank destroyers. So uh, don't be afraid to shoot some of that premium ammo with it. Uh, sometimes that's just kind of what you have to do uh, with these tanks. <laughs> Sorry, my little pop up there at the bottom for my uh, uh <laughs> monitor calibration tool. All right, so popping back over, what stands out about these smaller uh, six pounders is low alpha these are high rate of fire guns it's kind of death by a thousand paper cuts kind of feel here so we only have 90 alpha compared to 160 on average all the way up to 220 it means you're gonna have to fire a lot more shells but the good news is it fires extremely fast two point a shell every 2.93 seconds is pretty fantastic and if you hit adrenaline it means it will just pump out shells uh, what i do like about those low rate of fire or the fast rate of fire guns is it it lets you perma-track tanks really easily, uh, which is fantastic on a non-turreted tank destroyer. So if you get charged by a light tank or a medium tank, start aiming at those drive wheels because even if they carry two um, repair kits, uh, you can essentially perma-track them after uh, you know close to five seconds uh, if you tap adrenaline so uh, that's a really powerful tool and something you can use uh, to get through kind of those problems and, and something we'll again we'll talk about here as we go 
Gun handling is actually not so disappointing, pretty average to good aim times. Uh, same with dispersion, actually uh, good to average at 0.328. Um, you can snipe with this tank if you want to. Uh, it, it's good close range. Again, it's play style and matchup, so you got to keep an eye out um, on that. But you can see it's, again, better than the American tanks in that 3.44, 3.7 uh, range, or 0.37 range. So really not too bad at all. Uh, average on uh, movement and rotation uh, which is good um, but not too big of a deal seven degrees of gun depression uh, it's pretty nice uh, one thing you have to watch out for is pretty horrible elevation 13 degrees of gun elevation is um, actually pretty much terrible so uh, you don't want to get downhill from tanks too much because if something is above you you may not be able to elevate that gun to get them it's always better to be on the high ground anyway but something to be aware of with this tank and, and that's a little bit quirky um, 20 is much more of a typical uh, range. 13 degrees of gun arc is average to poor. It's not as bad as a lot of the Russian tanks usually are, even though the 85 does have a nice 15 degrees, but you can see the toaster at only five. Uh, that just means in general, uh, you'll, you be pretty average as far as resetting your camo not as bad as some of these other tanks and uh, aiming arc is also really important when something is trying to circle of death you though the farther you can move that gun uh, the kind of the additional traverse speed you, know, you gain from that getting into the stuff that is definitely <laughs> on the poor side is going to be anything revolving involving mobility you can look at all this green on all the other tanks it is just slow and lumbering 20 forward 10 backwards pretty bad uh 10 isn't that uncommon backwards but 20 and 20 i think you need to be driving downhill with a stiff breeze behind you it, you're just not going to hit that speed very often uh obviously it's not quick but like i said we're going to get to the armor which is going to make up for a lot of these things uh, it's certainly a specialist tank and you have to treat it um with that in mind 10.59 horsepower to ton ratio again pretty horrible way 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 worse than even some of these slower tanks like the su-85 and the toaster aren't particularly fast tanks but they uh, can run it down pretty quickly and because of that also the uh, resistances are poor just kind of is what it is uh, 20 degrees of traverse isn't the worst thing you're ever going to see there are some some worse ones but since you're turreted or non-turreted sorry um that is something that's going to show up a little bit more. Uh, a nice little perk of this tank is 133% credit coefficient, so it earns but pretty good for a non-premium tank. Uh, it's almost at a premium level for some of those, so that I think the main thing with that for me is it means you can fire some APCR and not feel bad about it. Hit that Pramo if you need it, uh, and, and don't have to worry about breaking the bank so much with it. Fairly standard on the view range uh, with the Binox, uh, nothing really to, to say a whole lot here. A ton of hit points considering the armor. Typically in Blitz, when you gain a ton of armor, you'll have a little bit of hit with the hit points. They try and balance that, but not with the AT2. It's uh, pretty much top of the line here, which is, uh, again, really fantastic. And you're pretty heavy at 40 tons for tier 5, which means nothing is going to ram you and do uh, incredible amounts of damage. So now we're getting into the parts that really matter on this tank. It is an armored beast. I called it uh, a rolling bunker for a reason. Uh, for its tier, it's a, it's just kind of crazy. It's honestly probably the most heavily armored tank tier for tier in the game. And you can use that to really bully stuff around. So 203, 102, 102. There are tier 4 tanks that can't pen you from the back with premium ammo. That's how strong it is. Uh, that, that's sh those are just fantastic numbers and just leaps and bounds above anything else all the way around. And like I said, that that's what we really care about with this tank and that's what we're going to focus on quite a bit. Okay, on Armor Inspector, we're going to highlight exactly what I'm talking about here. So here we're at an even tier tank against a PZ-34. Uh, typically, even tier tanks are going to go through just fine, but this is just a brick. It's all red. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you face this tank, you know that it does have the weak cupola, but it's really pretty small. And if you're wiggling around, you get these troll bounces. And anytime you see it even start to go yellow there, you're in these marks, that is going to start to be 
a essentially an RNG roll. Once you hit yellow, you they could low roll their pen and really struggle with it. Um, even like a lot of tank destroyers will start to get these really weak spots on the cheeks, and this tank just doesn't do it. Um, even when they start to get on the side, look how incredible that is. They have you have to be almost 90 degrees flush. Uh, on an even tier tank to even pen these side hatches even once you angle a little bit we're again starting to go yellow and that's an rng roll 56 percent i mean you just can't count on that very much so that is just really fantastic even the backs aren't incredibly weak like even with some angling the back of kind of the superstructure is going to be fairly strong so loads and loads of armor if you're in a tier lower than this just forget about it it's going to be really difficult even going a tier up, so this is versus a KV-1S with the massive 122mm gun, and that is extremely respectable armor. Remember you have some gun depression, so start to use that a little bit. And all you have are these weak spots uh, at the Coppola, which these poor aiming guns of some of these large ones are going to struggle with anyway. And when you're angled, even still here, almost 45 degrees. And again, going to really struggle to pen the sides. So this is loads and loads of armor. It doesn't matter what tier you're at. Uh, it, it's going to really um, be fantastic with that. And so when you're watching those matchups and choosing your engagements carefully, uh, you can have a lot of controlled aggression. And uh, I think we're, when we get into the gameplay, I'm going to focus on that a lot. Just because you're slow and turreted doesn't mean you can't get close to the enemy. Also doesn't mean you can't take people on one at a time. It just means that you need to know what you're doing when you engage those enemies and prepare for what you think they're going to do next if they're going to charge there's tools you can use to prevent them from getting around you okay so let's get into some gameplay so we're going to start on uh, lost temple and i'm actually going to highlight a top tier battle or yeah when i'm high tier first with this just because you can show this game shows kind of the strengths and weaknesses of this tank all together. So because of the matchup that I've got uh, in these low tiers, it's a lot of light tanks, so I know they're going to pretty much go this river area. And I am extremely slow. There's nothing I can do about it. There are going to be carcasses by the time I get up to this battle, but it's just kind of how it is. I have to just take my time and work in there as quickly as possible. And it's just one of the negatives with this tank. And pretty much exactly like I'm expecting. The entire teams of both teams are clashing down in the river. Both, Neither team is doing particularly well. I haven't even fired a shot yet and we're almost a minute in. Uh, no deaths, but so many low, <laughs> low hit point tanks already. It's two to one, still rolling in, still rolling in, nothing to shoot at. I'm just hoping at this point that there's something left once I get there. I'm starting to look for my first shot. Team is still dying. <laughs> and it's just... It kind of infuriating when you drive a tank like this and, and that's what you're running into but there's really nothing you can do about it it's just part of the game uh, but once you get here it's about making the most of the situation you're in so i'm finally getting somewhat close to the battle here and we're down two tanks and i haven't fired a shot finally at 5 30 i fire the first shot and it is two first five my teammate is sitting pretty exposed and so exactly what I talked about, this is a dangerous tank right here in front of me in the T-34. And now I'm in a 1 vs. 5 and I've only fired a few shots. So I was instantly going for those drive wheels, trying to get them. I'm still focused on the T-34 because it's probably the most dangerous tank that I'm seeing there. And yet all the bounces. These are a lot of tanks that are lower tier than me, so I'm going to choose my targets very carefully. I want to focus on tanks that have a higher chance of being able to pen me or tanks that are fast and can get behind me. Because the worst thing that could happen at this point is to be flanked and get into a circle situation. So those are the ones I have to focus on first. Uh, the Electo has a little bit of everything and the fact that he's got fairly strong pen and fairly quick. So I need to go ahead and drive forward so I can get to a point to kind of put my back into something with more cover. And the Crusader is also very dangerous because good pen, good high firing gun as well. So I'm just going to let them bounce everything they can. I can see the Electo lining up for the shot, but I need to get rid of the cru Crusader as fast as possible. And now he really needs to go because a high chance again of being able to get through me. So I'm going to focus on that 100%. Anytime I have adrenaline back in the situation, I want to go ahead and burn it and get through as many as possible. But I am just slowly whittling these guys down because keeping them in front of me 
<laughs> and using the incredible armor of these tanks. The M8 can get through me, he's got enough pen even with some of the lesser guns, uh, but <laughs> still it's just, it, it's hard in these low tiers, they get a little terrified of you um, because they're not sure how to get through these tanks and that's why they're so dangerous. Uh, the T95 has similar armor for its tier 9, but there's a lot more opportunities for those players. Um, to, to know the strengths and weaknesses of tanks. So these low tiers, you can really abuse uh, people just by having an understanding of the game. So I'm a little worried at this point that he is going to run away from me, because again, speed is not the friend of this tank. Uh, if I'm the M8, I'm running away here intentionally just to relocate and get a quick run to his backside uh, if I didn't feel comfortable being able to do it to begin with. And now, based on time, I have to go ahead and go there's no chance I can catch him if he plays it smart, and it takes this tank so long to get to the cap circle that that's essentially where you have to go just to be safe. Again, just know what tank you're in. If your tank is slow, it's okay. There's strengths that it has to make up for that, but make sure you're using it to the best of its ability. So he rolls through cap, and luckily I get that good spot so I can go ahead and get a shot in, but I assume he's either going to run away or cap. And honestly, at this point, I don't care which one it is. <laughs> uh, able to get the spot, but now he's behind some soft covers, so I won't be able to see him. But I know I have plenty of time to roll up, and as long as he's in cap, I know he doesn't have the ability to get away from me. So, <laughs> this is back when we have uh, a little bit of more chat going on, so just letting him know that I've got this under control. As long as I see that base capture points start racking up, I'm close enough that it's not going to be much of a threat. Uh, as long as, again, you play smart. And, and so this is why this tank is, a, is boring for a lot of people, too. It is slow, uh, but the gunfire is so fast, I think it keeps you in the action a little bit, and it keeps that a little bit more exciting than still being slow, and just waiting for, you to, uh, for the whole game on end on end. So, a million medals there. Of course a steel wall, because, again, this thing is just made to bounce shots, and, and that's what's so fun about it. Okay, switching down to Canal, and I buried you a little of the beginning where I'm just slowly trotting along. And I'm actually low tier in this battle. There are plenty of tier 6s and plenty of tanks with really high armor. And like I talked about when we were looking over stats, this tank is a little weak in the penetration department. So you can see any angling on that KV-1, even my APCR is struggling to get through. So since he's pushing through, I go ahead and roll out enough so I can get some shots into him. Uh, that'd be a great tank to get rid of right off the bat and hitting that APCR. I'm not going to be scared to use it. It's a tool in this game, and when you're low tier, you're just going to have to use it more time than others. Uh, the only bad thing is that you need so to fire so many shells when uh, you have these rapid-fire guns. Okay, so because that KV-1 rolled down, we know that there, the rest of them should be pretty much to our left, to the far side, and so I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive and try and push into some of these big tanks. Um, also to try and save this KV-1 that I have uh, and, and just start firing away. It'll also keep me down around the cap area, which on canal there's a lot of cover here and it makes you much harder to circle. And so I can use that as part of my tools. And so I'm just kind of rolling back, looking for shots in between these. I don't want to get too crazy because they're elevated above me. They have a much easier shot. But there's all these little snippets. And there's enough gun handling with these small uh, penetration guns that I can do it. So go ahead and shoot with the APCR. And then I'm rolling forward because I know the KV-2 doesn't have very good gun depression. But you can see where that elevation that I was talking about comes into play as well. I have to actually have to roll back quite a quite a ways because 13 degrees or 15 or whatever it was of gun elevation is just bad. It, it really is just not good. So KV-1 is actually playing really smart. He's using the train uh, very intelligently, um, but I'm at an angle where it means I can sneak some of these in and you can still see these high tier tanks uh, bouncing shots because that Coppola is just not a big, ang uh, big target and I'm moving around most of the time in between shells just to make it even harder to hit. So again, I'm rolling back now uh, a little bit more because we can see tanks starting to push um, up to our left and I want to be able to use these hills to keep myself fairly protected. Um, 
and just kind of work through. You can see a leopard's going to have a lot of trouble with that horrible uh, individual shell dispersion to, to hit a weak spot like a coppola. He's going to really need to get behind me. So uh, that's part of the reason I'm shooting him right now and not kind of worried about this easy eight or keeping an eye on them because a leopard is really dangerous in the late game. He's one of the few that can definitely get around me uh, no problem. Uh, Star Chaser comes in here, <laughs> so now it's pretty much just a turkey shoot. They're all just dropping down, and this is where that great rate of fire is so helpful. Uh, if he wasn't pinned, I'd be shooting at his drive wheels, uh, but since he's just kind of pinned down, I can just take my time and pick him apart and take the easy shots. Uh, Jumbo makes me a little bit more nervous, so I switch for a second. Uh, when you see them start to aim like that and really take their time, that's when you need to be more aware and start to wiggle around, because that means they're trying to get that nice tight aim on your commander's hatch and you want to make sure that you present the most difficult target as possible and now i'm just shooting whatever tank is in front of me because they're all dangerous um, and, <laughs> and i need just want to keep as many tanks in front of me as possible uh, the team hasn't been super helpful uh, hanging in that corner behind me and so i'm just being aware if he tried to circle i thought he would try and circle so i'm angling right off the bat if you start to pivot that hole um, before he gets around you it, it's very beneficial so again, I hope this helps. This is a really interesting tank. It's a fun tank at low tiers. It does well even when it's a low tier tank uh, and taking on tier sixes. It's just really strong. You just need to approach it the right way. Uh, platoons help a lot, but take care guys uh, and more coming soon.